Hello and welcome to the Erdad Stamps YouTube channel where we talk about all things related to stamps and stamp collecting. My name is Pete West and I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it and if you do please click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to get regular updates on new content. Hello again from Our Dad Stamps. A couple of days ago I was watching a TV programme on Channel 5 with Ben Fogel called The Buried City and it looked at the city of Plymouth which was the capital city of Montserrat that was devastated by a volcano eruption in the 1990s and it got me wondering whether they produced any stamps to aid the victims and to help in the rebuild. And so I thought today's video, we could look at those particular stamps and indeed the stamps of Montserrat in general. Now it's not an island I knew much about before watching this program and doing a bit of research. But for those of you who don't know, it's in the Caribbean, not far from Antigua. And it's quite a small island with a current population of only 5,000 people. In 1995, a previously dormant volcano in the Soufriere Hills erupted and over the next five years, it completely devastated the southern part of the island and made it completely uninhabitable. So much so that two thirds of the population were forced to leave the island and live mostly in the UK in order to survive. And the programme Ben Fogel looks at how the islanders are coping now and what's happened since and it's a very interesting program if you get the chance to see it and indeed in uh, investigating i found there were several sets that were issued to raise money towards the restoration and we'll have a look at those in a minute but as usual i thought i'd start at the beginning and montserrat is a british colony and like many british colonies they used British stamps with a special cancellation and Montserrat's cancellation was A08. And this was used between 18, 1850s and 1876 when Montserrat got their first stamps. In actual fact, the first stamps were stamps of Antigua overprinted with Montserrat and there were just two stamps of that type which was a penny red and a six penny green. Both those stamps are fairly valuable, but not out of people's price ranges. So maybe something you can look at. But then in 1880, they produced their own stamps. And ever since then, they've they followed more or less the same as most British colonies in that there were definitive issues for Queen Victoria, Edward VII, George V, and then when George VI came to the throne, there was a pictorial issue from a halfpenny all the way up to one pound. And these showed various scenes from around the island. And if you're looking at collecting these, they generally come in two different perforations, perf 12 and perf 14, which have quite a difference in value. So it's something to look out for. Similarly, when Queen Elizabeth came to the throne, uh, they issued a pictorial set of Queen Elizabeth stamps, which followed a similar set to those of, of George VI. The interesting thing to note, though, that was that on the George VI stamp, there were several stamps that were inscribed with Badge of the Presidency or Map of the Presidency. And when they were printed for Queen Elizabeth, they continued with Map of the Presidency and Badge of the Presidency. However, I'm not exactly sure when, but they decided that it should read Map of the Colony and Badge of the Colony. So there are two different types on the Queen Elizabeth set of the half cent, the three cent, the six cent and the four dollar eighty cent. So once again, if you're looking at collecting the Queen Elizabeth sets, there are two different types to look out for in those values. And for the lower values, there's not really much difference between the, the cost of them. But for the $4.80, it, it does make quite a significant difference to the value of the stamp. So it's definitely worth looking out for. 
from about the 1970s onwards, Montserrat became like a lot of small countries. They saw stamps as a way of boosting the economy and so produced a multiple of stamps through the 70s, 80s and, and still do. Some of these, however, can be quite nice. Montserrat is well known for its for its greenery and wildlife and plants, so there are some very nice sets which show off these features. With regards to the volcano, I found three different sets that were issued to provide aid for victims and for the country. One in 1997, one in 2005 and one in 2017. The 1997 one is made up of nine different stamps, all with a value of $1.50. And generally the stamps show different images of the ash clouds going up or lava flows. But there are also two stamps of birds that became endangered because of the volcano. And the set was issued on a mini sheet and some of the money from the sale of the stamps was used to aid the victims of the volcano. The next set in 2005 marked the 10th anniversary of the first eruption. And this, as you can imagine, is a bit further on. It also shows much of the volcanic cloud and the volcanic lava flows, but also shows some of the devastation that's left after the eruption. One of the stamp features what's left of the airport. There was obviously no sign of the runway whatsoever. There's also an image showing the, the pyroclastic flow entering the sea and, and how it looks now where there's a large extra piece of land caused by the lava flow. This set, again, it's, it's on a mini sheet of nine separate stamps. Each stamp has a value of $2. And although it doesn't state anything on the sheet, I'm sure that some of the, the uh, proceeds from the sale of this have gone towards helping the rebuilding programme. The third set, produced in 2017, is a set of six stamps, again on a mini sheet, that show the results of the devastation from the volcano. It's six different buildings which are completely buried in ash and lava flow. Some of the buildings you can see, it's up to the second floor. So it's, you know, you can imagine just how bad it was. And they're very different. They're all of different values from $2.80 up to $6. And once again, some of the money from the sale of these stamps were, were used to help in the rebuilding process. Those are the only sets that I could find that actually depict what happened with the volcano. As I said, Montserrat is one of the countries that issue many, many stamps all year round. And one interesting one I've found is there seems to be several sets celebrating Jerry Garcia, the lead singer of The Grateful Dead. Now, I'm not quite sure what the connection between Jerry Garcia and Montserrat is. What I do know is that, that George Martin of Beatles fame opened uh, recording studios in Montserrat. Uh, called Air Studios or AIR Studios and lots of famous musicians went there to record. Maybe Jerry Garcia was one of them and maybe he has helped towards some of the restoration costs. But the um, the studios were closed in 1989 following a hurricane that damaged a considerable amount of the infrastructure. But yeah, Jerry Garcia's connection... As I said, I don't know anything more than the fact that maybe he recorded there, but there's certainly several sets of stamps. And in fact, there's several sets of stamps depicting musicians of, of all eras. So if that's your theme, then maybe you could look at some of the stamps of, of Montserrat. One of the unusual things that Montserrat has done, maybe solely in an effort to raise money, is... They've overprinted many of their sets with OHMS. Now, OHMS normally stands for On Her Majesty's Service, but these stamps apparently were used by the Philatelic Bureau rather than any official government agencies. And as I said, there are quite a few sets overprinted with OHMS, which gives you yet another set to, 
to collect if you're into Montserrat stamps. None of them are particularly expensive, so they should be readily available. And there are some quite attractive ones with the flora and fauna of the island that that may be of interest to you. Well, that was my very brief story about Montserrat and the stamps they issue. Before I watched the program the other night, as I said, I knew very little about the, the country and I've certainly never visited, but it's certainly a very interesting program if you get the chance to watch the program by Ben Fogel and uh, open my eyes to a, another country of the world and just shows the power of stamp collecting in finding out different things about different places. All right, thanks for listening and uh, see you again in another couple of weeks. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable. Don't forget you can visit my online stores at eBay and Dell Camp under the name of Our Dad Stamps, where I have over 2,000 items for sale. Please join us again in two weeks' time for another edition of Our Dad Stamps podcast.